The African continent is commonly known for its large and deadly gnar crocodile, but much like Asia and the Americas, this continent holds many more members that are arguably far more fascinating. The genus we will be covering today is known as Osteolamus, meaning bony fro, and today we are going to discuss it. Belonging to the subfamily Osteolaminae, also containing the slender snouted crocodile, which may have diverged from the dwarf crocodile around 20 million years ago, these animals may be more diverse than previously thought, with potentially three distinct populations, one being the African dwarf crocodile, one being Osborne's dwarf crocodile, and one not yet named species. There may also be a fourth. Therefore, this whole video is subject to change in the near future. We will explore the first two species in further detail though. Though commonly being referred to as the dwarf crocodile, they have no larger counterpart alive today, though in the past, these species did exist. Interestingly, these animals are not closely related to the larger open water species, the Nile crocodile, though this is most probably the reason it is referred to as a dwarf. They usually grow to an adult size of 1.5 meters on average in length making them the second smallest crocodile alive today. Overall though, the smallest crocodilian is not a crocodile, but is the Cuvier's dwarf caiman. Its alternative and more fitting name is the broad-snouted crocodile, but it also goes under the name bony crocodile, which it shares with the mugger crocodile. Their conservation status is unknown due to their elusive nature, though new assessments are being done to get a better idea of these crocodilians' population numbers. They are at least vulnerable, with populations declining due to the bushmeat trade and habitat loss. Spending most of their lives in mangrove swamps and rainforests, they are mainly nocturnal, spending most of their day sunbathing to get energy or in a burrow. A particular population has taken this burrowing lifestyle to the extreme. The Abanda Caves in the Gabon Republic are known to have orange cave-dwelling crocodiles that mainly feed off bats their coloration is due to the acidity of the waters in the caves. When scientists first discovered these crocodiles, they found potential for a new species, with the population within being obviously genetically distinct, although they may still be interbreeding with the outside world. It is unknown how they lay their eggs, although it is presumed that they do it the same way as other crocodilians, meaning they must leave the cave at some point. The rest of the facts in this video will be on the normal population, as research is still being done to truly understand these cave-dwelling crocodilians. When it comes to predation, these crocodiles have two main ways of doing things. They will scavenge wandering across the Congo forest, or go into the Congo basin and hunt for fish. Commonly traversing along the rainforest floor, this makes them one of the most terrestrial crocodilians alive today. They can high walk and do this very regularly, similar to their distant relatives, the Cuban crocodiles. They are also efficient swimmers, with muscular tails and webbed feet, a traditional trait found in crocodiles. The African dwarf crocodile can hold its breath for up to four hours, using a similar waiting tactic to many other crocodiles. Regionally, their diet can change massively, with regions such as Nigeria seeing these animals consume far more crabs and gastropods, while in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or more fish are eaten. Due to the change in food opportunities seasonally, the African dwarf crocodile's diet can change quite a lot, and in the dry season when food becomes harder to find, it has been highlighted that these crocodilians can last a long time without food. These animals are very solitary, only interacting with the other members of their species during mating season, where the male will have no participation in fatherhood. Instead, the female will lay between 10 to rarely 20 eggs and bury them in a mound of decaying vegetation. Incubation will last anywhere from 80 to 100 days, with the mother guarding them throughout. Once the infants have hatched, the mother will watch her young for an unknown period of time before leaving them to fight against the cruelty of nature. Many of these young will be victims to birds, mammals and other reptiles, but those that survive will go on to create a new generation of African dwarf crocodiles. Due to these crocodiles' elusive nature, not much more information can be found on them. Although, regarding their age, one individual in Lincoln Park Zoo lived to the age of 70 years old, 
dying in 2010, so these animals are sure long lived in captivity, though in the wild it is unknown for how long they can live. If you were surprised to learn of the African dwarf crocodile, then you will be even more surprised to learn of Osborne's dwarf crocodile, an equally, if not more, obscure species. Being endemic to a region of the Congo Basin, these crocodilians are closely related to the previous species Osteolamus tetrapis, being validated as a distinct species from the African dwarf crocodile in 2021, Osteolamus osborni is the only other extinct member of the genus Osteolamus, at least so far recognised as a distinct species from the African dwarf crocodile. Much like the rest of its genus, it is nocturnal and thought to have a declining population in its native range. Mainly this crocodile is distinct genetically speaking, with this also being the case for two other not yet named subspecies or species, though still official recognition of these two other species is yet to happen. Other unique characteristics include their smaller average size of 1.2 meters, which is interesting since it makes them the smallest crocodile in the world. In addition, they do not have an upturned snout, have less body armor, and have a less pointed skull than their relatives. A lot needs to be done to have a true grasp of how many species this genus has, but for now, this is all of the information I gathered on this interesting genus of reptiles. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to producing more content for you all soon. You can vote for the subject of our next video on the community tab. You can now vote for the gharials, the African long-snouted crocodiles, or the paleosuchus. Goodbye for now.